bad guys love them. Cartels gots to have them. And of course, you can't forget that they're loved by the biggest, baddest authority figures of them all. Moms. Biggie got shot in one. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Chevy Suburban. Suburban is the longest lasting moniker in American automotive history. It's kind of like if Ford still had a Model T. I'll do my best to breeze by the early low horsepower bits that happened before your grandpappy was just a glimmer in your granddad's eyes, but I'm not gonna skip it. It was the early 30s and the middle of the US had a big bowl of dust on its hands. From 1930 to 1934, Chevy was quietly putting station wagon bodies on their full-size truck frames for private use. Private, meaning outfits like the National Guard and the US military, you ever heard about them? Support the troops. As these big, long covered trucks are coming off the line, some dude at Chevy was like, these things are pretty useful. Maybe we could uh, make one for the public. Some sort of uh, backwoods, family and possession transport vehicle. Uh, why not call it the Suburban Carry-All? <laughs> My dude, Brad, that is why they call you the Thesaurus. Dude, thank you, I love that nickname. The Suburban Carry-All had its Chevy Truck Papa's rugged full-size frame, and from its station wagon mama, it got a sleek body windows and plenty of seats and it came out in 1935. You may know that GM was in the habit of sharing designs between their companies back in the day and the boys over at GMC were like, hey uh, can we um, borrow your backwoods family and possession transport vehicle? And Chevy was like, Sure. So in 1937, both Jimk and Chevrolet had the same car with the same name. During Dub Dub 2, Suburbans were used as military transport vehicles and soldiers got to liking them. So after all that warring overseas, GIs were coming home, buying houses and making babies. <laughs> A lot of them wanted to load those families into the big Suburbans they got used to in the war. So Chevy gave them what they wanted with the third gen Suburban in 1947. Look at those curved fenders and sweeping lines. This gen Suburban was the inspiration for the 2011 HHR, the greatest looking car of all time. Through the 50s and 60s, the Suburban got beefier and more capable, just like my grandpa, but it also had some strong competition. Jeep and the Ford Bronco started to siphon some business from the Suburban, so GM responded by making it more off-road capable. But they were faced with the decision. Would they slim down the Suburban so it could compete with the new brood of off-road fun machines? No! Let's make it bigger! So they did. The Suburban got over a foot longer in 1967. Sticking to their guns worked. Just 6,200 Suburban Suburbans were produced in 1967, and by 72, that number had grown to over 27,000. As is the custom with such great sales, Chevy and GMC decided it was time for a new generation of the bourbon, and it would be the best yet. Chevy Suburban, tough like a truck, smooth like a wagon. The seventh gen Suburban debuted in 1973 and would last for almost 20 years. This is the Suburban that would define Suburbans for most Americans. When it came out, you could get it with the legendary Chevy small blocks or the beefalicious 454 under the hood. It was tall and aggressive and screamed, I know what the heck I'm doing! Now get the frick out of my way, you fence! By the mid 80s, it was the Jeep Cherokee and Toyota 4Runner that were changing the game and the term SUV first entered the automotive lexicon. Lucky for Chevy, the hardy, capable Suburban was ahead of the game. By 1984, Chevy and GMC were cranking out almost 65,000 Suburbans a year. Remember, aside from small changes, this model had already been out for over a decade. The world could not get enough of this oversized, outdoorsy sports vehicle people hauler. After 20 years, it was time for a new look. And GM handed the task to their established designer, Chuck Jordan. I love doing up to speed episodes on American cars because I know how to say everybody's name. Chuck was known to design cars that embodied the era in which they were designed. This 59 Caddy, the Buick Riata, this Oldsmobile 98, he'd later do the Chevy Cavalier, all of them competent designs, but none of them very exciting. 
Why choose someone so vanilla? Well, military and special forces love the Suburban for many reasons, but one of those reasons is that it's not flashy. It blends in as much as something can, as massive as it is. But when you need to stand out, caravan four or more black bourbons and nobody is getting in your way. If you see a horde of black Suburbans, you know something is going down. These vehicles are also reliable and easy to work on all over the globe, thanks in part to GM's worldwide parts supplier network. They they're everywhere and they're durable. There are stories of dudes driving through hostile territories and taking fire in these things, but making it safely out in a suburban riddled with bullet holes. You know who else likes being badass and traveling in entourage? Celebrities. The beefy suburbans came with luxury options and had plenty of room inside for friends and business partners. Biggie Smalls was in one when he got shot. Rest in peace, Big Papa. He used to love when I called him that. In 2000, GMC figured it was time to rebrand their Suburban as the much fancier Yukon XL and the Chevy Suburban soldiered on as though nothing had happened. It did start to get a little more comfortable to drive when it was loaded up with high-tech load leveling auto ride and rear leveling suspension. Chevy leaned into the off-road rugged image and unveiled the legendary Z71 package in 2001, which featured a front skid plate, off-road and tires, a unique grill, running boards, and Z71 stamped everywhere. They also had available quadra steer, which means all four wheels steer, which helps when your vehicle is over 18 feet long. And families love Suburbans. They're not for everyone, but we all had a friend whose mom or dad hauled them around in a Suburban. 2007's 10th generation Suburban took inspiration from the Tahoe and was redesigned with more modern, less boxy styling. It had a badass, more aerodynamic shape and a steeply raked windshield angle. It also got even bigger, growing almost half a foot in length. In February 2010, for the Suburban 75th birthday, Chevy, of course, unveiled the 75th anniversary trim level, the Diamond Edition. Chevy was embracing the luxury SUV market and decided they would absolutely kill it with this one. This big, beefy beauty had white diamond exterior paint. It had standard 20-inch chrome-clad wheels, remote starting, adjustable pedals, and leather upholstery with heated slash cooled front seats. Yes, hip hop moguls and special ops would still drive their blacked out Suburbans, but now Mariah Carey could have one too. That brings us all the way to the current 11th generation Chevrolet Suburban, which was introduced to the public in September, 2013. Special edition 11th gen Suburbans abound. The Texas edition, a little thank you to the Lone Star State because more Suburbans are sold in Texas than anywhere else. Texas edition featured a trailer package, all them suspension goodies, all wheel drive, big old wheels, and of course, an exclusive Texas edition badge. What could be cooler than a Texas edition? Only the most badass special ops inspired vehicle of them all, the 2017 Chevy Suburban. Midnight edition. I want you guys to do an exercise with me right now. Close your eyes. Imagine the blackest black you can think of. You got it? The Midnight Edition is blacker! Windows, grills, wheels, even the bow tie is black. It's so badass. The Secret Service and spies must love this thing. Summer of 2019 will bring us the fastest and most furious street-themed suburban to date, the RST. RST stands for Rally Sport Truck. Think about that. A Rally Sport Suburban? The Suburban is already unreal for its size. Now listen to what's in the RST. 6.2 liter V8 making 420 buff horses. It's got magnetic ride control with variable performance settings and a 10-speed automatic transmission. Borla makes the exhaust and it comes out of the freaking side! And it's also got up Brembo's because Brembo's on everything. And if 428 your lucky number, a specialty vehicle engineering out of New Jersey says they've perfected a tuning kit that'll bump your beefy bourbon to a thousand horsepower. That's buff horsepower! Over 10 decades and 11 generations of vehicles, four generations of humans have learned that the Suburban is unrivaled in a class it created. And I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps kicking for another century. Thanks for watching Up to Speed every Thursday till I get 
day I die, new episode on Donut. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Smash it. This show is a history show, but if you want me to actually, you want to see me actually interact with the cars, check out my new show, Bumper to Bumper. I host it. It's just as funny as this one, except there's cool cars in it.